some say that the dogs howl because they can see the shaitan. What has he come for? What do the dogs know and see at this pivotal hour of the day that we humans don't? What secrets do they hold? Whose side are they on? With hearts full of hope, Ma, Daddy and I had come to seek the Bhai Sahib's permission to allow me to marry a boy outside our community. My parents' heads lowered with shame and their eyes filled with tears as he told us, my parents only had the courage to respond with, Ji saab. Squeezed in between them, I sensed their helplessness. I wanted to take them and run far away from this lie and fear. I wanted to say, these are tactics the Bhai Sahib uses to make us give in. Years of witnessing women being suppressed in my community had toughened me. In a way, I'd prepared for this moment for a long time. As I sat face to face in front of him, unfazed by his power, flashes of my entire life came to my mind. At six, when the right to my body was taken away from me, the day my grandmother took me to a community auntie who made me lie on the ground, held me tight and cut me. At 10, when I left my house to play sports and other aunties from the community stared at me harshly, thinking I was too outgoing. At 13, when I got my period and my misak was taken, and almost immediately I was expected to be a good Bohra woman, wear a rida and abide by the rules. At 18, when I received my first marriage proposal and everyone around me thought that I should say yes. How much trauma, pressure and blackmail can a young girl handle? Did anyone ask what these experiences were doing to me emotionally and physically? The Bhai Sahib refused to allow me to marry outside the community. I went ahead and did it anyway. I needed to leave my community. It was the price I paid for my freedom. I thought of other women and wondered about the choices they had made. My path was so scary and it took me years to heal and channel that rage and anger to work for change. Having lost the community I was born into, I often think about what my ideal community would look like. Women leading the way, young girls voicing the harm done to them, safe and loving spaces to uplift girls, protect them from khatna, and stand up to the day-to-day -day battles of being a Bora woman. Maybe the howling of those dogs every morning is a way of showing support and solidarity for women of my community. Maybe they are screaming for justice. But who is listening? <laughs>